Dead Space Remake is just about as amazing as everyone praises it to be. In fact, it's better. At least in my opinion. Honestly, it feels surreal to be talking about a new Dead Space game in the year of our brethren moon, 2023. And it was even better when news dropped of a permadeath mode being added to this game, because I knew it meant some juicy content was in store for you guys. But with Dead Space being my favorite survival horror series, I wanted to not just cover the permadeath playthrough, but the entire Platinum journey, because this game truly was something special for me. With all that said, there will be spoilers throughout this video because yes, despite this being a remake of the 2008 classic, there is some new sh** and I really think that fans of the series who haven't played the game or newcomers who are interested should do a gravity jump away from this video. Right about... Okay now, do a gravity jump. This is your warning, do a gravity jump. Or don't, it's up to you. For those sticking around, grab some snacks and engineering tools for protection because you're about to witness a bald man chill over dismembering the ever-living sh** out of some dudes. There's a lot of oomph in there. Before I started the game, I decided that for the first playthrough, I simply want to enjoy the game and then torture myself for you guys on the next playthrough on Impossible. So for the first playthrough, I'll be playing on hard. Starting our journey aboard the USG Kelly and we meet our wonderful cast of individuals going in for a simple maintenance job before we crash land into the USG Ishimura and are met with a hostile alien life form that freaks me out so bad that I forgot what the controls were. Oh. Go, go, go. I'm trying to run. Oh. Wait. Ah! That's different. That's a different control. I was holding L1 the whole time. I then make it to the iconic cut off their limbs room and receive the first weapon of the playthrough, the plasma cutter. After that, I make my way to the main objective and fight a necromorph who has a bit more training in track and field than I was anticipating. Oh. Yo, they run fast! Not too long after that, I earned my first trophy. However, here is where we meet the true enemy of the game. Darkness. Say, fellas, did somebody mention the door to darkness? No, not that one. Yo, this game is actually... scary. Where? 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 I hear you. F*** you. Where are you? <laughs> You see, the majority of this game is in almost complete darkness, like solo levels of darkness, but in a good way. Like, it really works for this game. It makes encounters way more tense. Whoa. They got me, actually, with that. Wow. After getting Thomas the train back online, I head back to the Kellyan, only for it to blow up and leave the remaining crew potentially stranded on the Ishimura. But all hope isn't lost. With knowledge of Captain Matthias's whereabouts, I head over to medical to acquire his rig. On the way, I acquire the kinesis ability that'll be helpful with making shish kebabs, which also earns me another trophy. A little later, we learn the new mechanics on how to traverse zero-g sections thanks to the devs smartly bringing over mechanics from Dead Space 2 and 3. So long, gravity jumps. You definitely will not be missed. So I make it to the morgue and retrieve Matthias's rig and run into an infector necromorph and uh, I definitely can't show that, sorry. But instead, what I can show you is another trophy that I earned in this encounter and with Matthias's rig, I'm now allowed into new places all across the Ishimura provided the door has a level one security clearance. On the way to engineering, when faced with sacrificing another power source, chat wanted to get more immersed in the game. Like, what are we turning off? Gotta turn off the lights in my room, too. I'm game. <laughs> oh yeah, now we're getting in character. <laughs> oh shit. I can definitely say this got me more immersed in the game, that's for certain. <laughs> what is behind me? I think it's behind me, isn't it? No, it actually is. After a tense holdout in the decontamination chamber, I witness one of the scariest things that only the Frostbite engine could possibly render. 
square. What the f I want the loot though. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's do it this way. All right, f you then. There we go. And I don't even get loot for it. Nice. Thank you, Dark Souls. After that abomination was taken care of, I activated the centrifuge and proceeded towards what I thought was the right direction until I realized I was making a big mistake. Left is restarting the engines, right? Ready when you are. <laughs> well, there's the first death. You were totally ready for that one. You know, I'm really glad I didn't start this playthrough on Impossible, because that would have been even more embarrassing. Not too long after that, we received the flamethrower, I, I mean the, the mid-thrower, and proceed further into the fleshy abyss. Hey, it's like Callisto Protocol, but better. After another tense holdout in the engine room, we later take the tram to the bridge where Hammond and Kendra both start to get a bit frustrated with each other, and I'm just reveling in the chaos because it's just like the old game. Yeah, team tension, team tension, team tension. Yeah, this is what I want. I want everyone to be mad at each other. Honestly, I wasn't really struggling much in the game at this point, as I adjusted pretty quickly on how to play. I mean, not to humble brag or anything, but this isn't exactly my first Dead Space game after all, but I wasn't really feeling pressured that much. Not yet, at least. It wasn't until chapter five where the game decides to throw you into the deep end with potentially one of the most stressful parts of the whole game. The reason for this is because of the hunter, a necromorph that refuses to die, which, you know, I can respect that. Uh, I can't relate though. Go, 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 get the f out, go, go, go. In this chapter, the game throws the hunter at you in multiple different and increasingly difficult situations, such as a large room with several enemies, or several rooms filled with poison gas, forcing you to rush through entire sections without much time to think. Not that I think about that much anyways. I think I blacked out. I'm sorry. What was I talking about again? Hunter Hunter? When you manage to get through all those sections, you then make your way to cryogenics where you face off with the hunter. There we go. Heat it. Yeah, the fight is pretty easy, believe it or not, and after getting a voice log from Kendra, I get one of the collectible trophies as well. Following that, I head over to Hydroponics to take down some extreme Weezer fans, as well as popping a couple more miscellaneous trophies along the way. And after injecting the last Weezer, I then must fight a Leviathan. Should I censor that? What the fuck? Is this allowed? What the fuck? Is that allowed? Anyways, it was fairly easy. Next, we head to the mining deck, get level 3 security clearance, and earn another trophy for using stasis on 50 enemies while also trying not to sh** myself from fear. Oh no! Get out of my way! Oh my god! I'll feel safe when I'm back at the train station. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Pick up this. Let's go. I'm supposed to be going the other way. Get the f out of the way. Holy! 
Get the f out of the way. <laughs> oh no. After that, I head over to the bridge to go fix the comms array. However, the antenna wasn't working to contact a nearby ship. Turns out, the Ishimura has an Ishimusi that's... Wow, I'm never gonna say that again. That's blocking the way and Isaac has to go fix it because of course he does. This fight was actually kind of cool, far and away better than what it used to be in the original. And after shooting the three weak spots on it, the Ishimusi goes down and I will stop saying that for the rest of my life. After that, the nearby ship, the USM Valor, which is also having a small necromorph problem, crashes into the side of the Ishimura. And in order to get away out of this nightmare, Isaac and the gang must head inside to salvage a small ship piece for a spare shuttle that they found. Yay. However, what is inside is the worst threat to humanity as a whole. Twitch streamers. I mean Twitchers. Follow me at twitch.tv slash thegreyscott. These guys are no joke, but what is a joke is my lack of situational awareness. Oh, sh- Alright, good to know. <laughs> Don't ever f***ing do that again. That would be... The worst if I lost an impossible run like that. The next attempt, I defused the nuke the correct way and then decided it was time to sit back and relax with some target practice. Shooting range online. Caution. Live fire exercise. So much for relaxing. <laughs> okay, I'm never gonna do that again. What the fuck? After that, some story stuff happens and we get the part that we needed and make quite the explosive exit. Once we're back in the Ishimura, I get the last few rigs that I needed to create the master security override for a trophy, but also to gain access to any door throughout the whole ship. To celebrate, I went to go play ball to earn yet another trophy. Since I could sense that I was getting close to the end of the game, I went to go finish up what I had left with the side quests and earn myself two more trophies for my efforts. A little later, I run into the hunter again, but this time I wanted to try a different approach by being friendly to him and teaching him how thrusters work on ships. God. I think he has intimate knowledge on how they work now. With the hunter gone, it was time this game dipped its toes into hentai by having a tentacle come out and drag me deep into the ship. I didn't like where this was going, so I shot the yellow part so that I could be 50 shades freed from its grasp. Without the marker in our possession, I must now head to the hangar and on the way there, Dr. Kine gives me a call which earns me yet another trophy for collecting 150 voice or audio logs. Now in the hangar, I go to this random locker and I'm surprised to find the Pang statue, which earns me yet another trophy. Oh, okay, so that's where that is. Final task left in the Ishimura is to take the marker to the shuttle and bring it back to Aegis 7. But Kendra was a fed and took it for herself, which left Isaac stranded, but then Nicole gives Isaac the confidence to get the marker back. So Isaac was like, I, I'm gonna fall with you and brings the stolen shuttle and the marker back so that they could fly it back to the planet. We make it down to the planet and go through a gauntlet of enemy encounters that proved to be easy with how broken the force gun and plasma cutter can be together. However, when I went to turn the power back on for the colony, this happened. Hey. 
What? I didn't. <laughs> that was a wonky ass hitbox. I'll make sure to not fucking do that in the next run. Holy shit. I will say once again if that's how an impossible run would have ended, I would have not been a fan of that. Once I don't die in a stupid manner, I bring the marker to the pedestal and get the reveal that both Isaac and Elizabeth, the woman from chapter six, were both being catfished by the marker. That's a pretty dumb way to explain it, but if you play the game, you'll get the gist. So how do we top off this excellently horrifying experience? By fighting a kaiju. This fight has some new things in comparison to the original, like how the hive mind shoots these explosive pustules at you, and then in the next phase it blocks off a section of the landing deck with corrosive spit while also trying to swing on you. But the most stressful part was trying to land the final shots while dangling in the air. This is where my NA aim truly shined. Yo, it moves around so much. Once I manage to actually land my shots, the hive mind is down for the count, and we make a desperate escape off Aegis 7 as the giant landmass plummets, and Isaac lives happily ever after. <laughs> this remake, 10 out of 10. 100%. Reminded me of my very first playthrough back in, what, 2010? I don't even know what else to say beyond that. That was just, that. This game's amazing, and I cannot wait to play it again and lose all the hair on my face from stress. And now, for the part most of you are probably here for, the impossible run. For those who don't know what this is, I'll explain the general premise for you. Impossible mode is a difficulty where you're playing on hard, the difficulty I just beat the game on, but when you die, you either start the game over again or continue the rest of the game on hard for that playthrough. This was stressful. Ooh. However, I was hearing that this wasn't as hard as it's cracked up to be, so to put further limits on myself, I wanted to beat impossible mode with the plasma cutter only, as there were sections of the game where I couldn't imagine myself without the force gun. And well, there's a trophy for beating the game with the plasma cutter only. So, uh, yeah. Right off the bat, I was getting so stressed out with potentially failing that I wanted to have some lights on. Oh, man. Hey, I should turn on my lights, huh? There's nothing logged. No duty roster, no power to the other. All right. Then I saw how much darker the game was with the lights on and thought, yeah, never mind. Actually, it's so much harder to see with these lights on. I'm gonna turn them off. I cannot see shit in the dark. I'm sure I'll change my mind in five minutes again. Do the light dance. I then go to acquire the only weapon to be used for the rest of the run, as well as stasis, and head into the first real encounter of the game. Shit. No, that's a lot of damage. Jesus, go down, you. F Oh my god, they do so much damage. Narrowly escaping, I was definitely humbled by the experience and made sure to play extra cautiously. With this added level of pressure, my mind, I mean, the marker, was playing tricks on me. Whoa, weird. I swear I saw a silhouette of one. Once I managed to calm my nerves a bit, I was able to efficiently take down some necromorphs again. Got him. Don't die, Queen. I am trying my best. This game is kind of long. 
And just like the last playthrough, once I managed to get into the groove of aiming for the legs and then one of the arms, as well as using Kinesis as much as I can, I would then be cruising on through the game. I even got through the part where I died the first time on the last playthrough without much of a sweat. That was too close. Holy sh**. In trying to restart the engine in Chapter 3, I had this whole thought out plan of not using the plasma cutter at all, and instead placing explosives, pipes, and stasis containers all at my feet to take care of anyone that came close. This is going to sh Holy sh**, that got way too close. Yeah, that plan went pretty well, I'd say. <sighs> Gonna need a nice, nice breath of fresh air after this. This run was going well, like too well, and I think the only real enemy so far was myself. Uh, sure, dude. No problem. I didn't want to do that. F me. I keep on making that same stupid mistake. Keep on trying to close the message and instead I heal myself. It's so annoying. Well, things were going well until I realized what part of the game I was at again. Uh, we might be tight on f***ing ammo. God damn it. Eh, we're gonna have to make do. It's open. Go. Oh. 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 I heard it fucking stomping towards me. It scared the shit out of me. Knowing what's coming up next, I made sure to splurge on some ammo because these guys eat bullets like they're marshmallows. chapter is the worst. I got so nervous about this chapter, in fact, that I went the wrong direction during the poisonous air section and almost died for it because I took a moderately long elevator. Oh no, was I supposed to go back? Oh f I don't have time for you. Oh my god, that was way too close. With a close call like that, I definitely grew some gray hairs on my head. Oh, wait. But just like last time, the hunter's boss fight was over without a hitch, and after shaving off a few pounds from stress, I continued my way through the impossible run. Oh, f you game oh my god that one got me good and that's the second time that i've seen that and it still got me the next chapter wasn't too bad i mean i didn't find myself struggling anywhere but i did learn something new that i don't think was a thing in any other dead space game wow Little known fact, you can use the vent's fans as like an offensive weapon. That's really cool. Despite not struggling much in this chapter, this game still managed to find new ways to scare the bejesus out of me. Don't f***ing make that noise. What the hell? Gave me a heart attack. It sounded like a big old step next to me. I was also trying to keep my spirits high in the face of fear by being a little naughty. You're leaning pretty hard on that if 
Oh, come on. Where's Hammond? Oh. What's he doing? I don't know. Is that noise? Focus, Sounds like good. I'm just kidding. That's terrible. <laughs> After injecting the last Weezer, I head back to food storage to take down the Leviathan, who didn't prove to be that difficult. And then I head over to the mining deck to move a couple of asteroids, get level 3 security clearance, and then get trolled by chat. Stop giving me contact energy, you fuck. Maybe the real cl was the dead- yep. I'm not even gonna read that. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, it absolutely was. I then drained the gravity tethers to create an SOS beacon. Got locked in a room and bamboozled the hunter only to then drop a small turd in my pants. That was so close. That could have been the end right there. I didn't know there was another one that they threw at me. After a scare like that, I went to go fix the comms array and my pants situation. And both took longer than I'd like to admit, but it got done regardless, so yeah. Now that we're in contact with the USM Valor, I go to fight the Ishi Mussy. God damn it, I said it again. We then have the Valor crash into the Ishimura, and we board the Valor for one of the harder sections of the game. Okay, here we go. We can't f*** this up. This is a very important room to not f*** up. Okay. Okay. I can rest easy now. Now that the nuke has been dealt with, all I had to do was survive the big hallway. Except there was one problem. No blades on the ground. Okay. How much ammo do I have? Hmm? <laughs> To paint a better picture on how screwed I am, in this specific room, the enemies that spawn are two Twitchers, two Lurkers, one Pregnant, one Exploder, and a Brute. This is really good, not good. That was a clutch stasis right there. To hit him right where he's like landing on the uh, the shock pad right here. That was clutch. Somehow, I got past that encounter, but I barely scraped by. After that, I grabbed what I needed and got the hell out of there. From there, I didn't struggle much until it came to the hunter boss fight where I got slapped around from enemy to enemy like it was a pinball table. But thankfully, my suit is pretty well upgraded and I took down the hunter in quick time once he got into position. Once I move the marker from the tentacle's clutches and into the shuttle, Kendra does her narc thing and leaves me with Kine's body, but Nicole and- Sorry, 
Elizabeth and Isaac bring the shuttle back and we fly down to Aegis 7 for the final part of this run. This final stretch of the game can easily spell the end for your run provided you don't come prepared with lots of ammo as there are waves and waves of enemies to the point where it feels like Call of Duty Zombies. The first few waves of enemies, while hectic, were never anything too much to handle. Get me out of here. Okay, that may have been a lie, but I played it smart and kept my distance when I did feel a bit overwhelmed. You wonder... Uh, Isaac, I hate to break it to you, but I think your girlfriend's a little weird. Like, something's not right with her. When going into the fan room, I made sure to make an exit expeditiously and to not get anywhere near the outsides of the fans, just in case I repeat the same mistake from the last run. However, coming back to the marker room, this happened. That's right, it happened again. And somehow, I lived, bitch. That could have been it. If I was lower on health, that could have been it. I didn't know there were explodey dudes here. Nah, I'm better. I appreciate that, that's very kind of you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just reeling right now from what just happened. With my underwear thoroughly swamped from what just happened, I decided to take some fan blades with me for protection. Emotional support fan, yeah, pretty much. It's my fidget spinner. It's my very, very lethal fidget spinner. Now heading outside, I fend off a bunch of necromorphs and bring the marker to its pedestal and prepare for the final battle. This is it. No going back now. The fight with the hive mind is insanely more nerve wracking now that there's a possibility of having to go back all the way to the beginning. So this time I had to make sure that my aim was on point. I was so focused this whole fight that I don't think I even uttered a word the whole time. The first phase was pretty smooth since it's so easy that a fruitcake could do it. Second phase went all right for as long as I didn't walk into the acid like an idiot. Yeah, that checks out. But now that the second phase is over with, the true test of whether or not I'm a choker or a closer comes into play. We fucking did it. We did it, yes! Deathless impossible run. Got it in the bag. And just like that, I beat Dead Space Remix in possible mode without dying and earned myself not only the untouchable trophy, but also the one gun trophy. I'm sorry to disappoint those who wanted a late game reset, but it is what it is. And after all that stress, I think it's time that I get a bit of revenge on the game after I get a few trophies first. This time, I'm starting a new game plus playthrough on easy so that I can breeze through it. Upon starting a new playthrough, I got the pack rat trophy as the game automatically places all the items I ended the previous playthrough with into storage. I then proceed into the cargo area once again and find the first marker fragment of the playthrough, which earns me another trophy as well as progress towards the alternate ending trophy too. The next order of business is to focus on getting all the kill base trophies. So first, I stomped on 10 enemies to get the backbreaker trophy, and then got all the various weapon base kills trophies as well. After I got all those trophies, I figured it was about time that I'd enact revenge on all of the enemies in the game with my newly acquired hand cannon. There we go. 
Bada bing, bada boom. Satisfying. The next set of trophies I needed to get were the Merchant Trophy, which was for getting all of the schematics in the game, then the Built to Order Trophy, which was for installing every weapon upgrade, and finally the Maxed Out Trophy, which is for fully upgrading all weapons and equipment. I then picked up the last of the marker fragments I needed and placed them in the residential area, then flew to Aegis 7 and beat the game to get the New Game Plus and Alternate Ending Trophies, as well as the hard-earned Platinum Trophy. Despite only dying three times across three playthroughs, I'd personally give this Platinum a 5 out of 10 difficulty rating, solely because of the amount of stress a permadeath mode can cause. Granted, the Impossible Mode Trophy can be cheesed, but that's besides the point. It honestly feels amazing to be playing a new Dead Space game almost 10 years after the last one, and it feels even more amazing that it's actually good fact, it's better than good. I'd go as far as to say that it's perfect. Anyways, if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing and letting me know what challenges you want to see next. I think I've said it in this video already, but I do these challenges live on Twitch, and it helps me out tremendously to have people to interact with as I'm doing these challenges. So please follow me over there. I deeply appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night, and thank you very much for watching. Bye.